part of being ready is to be here on a weekly basis and worshiping our Heavenly Father and learning about Him and His love. And I want to welcome all of you, especially those of you who are for the first time here, uh, those of you who came back from vacation, welcome back home. Those of you who are visiting us, welcome. I hope and I know you will be blessed because whenever we come into God's presence, He always has something to bless us with. And for those of you who have been here last two Sabbaths, you know that we are in a mini-series on the prayer of Jabez. And the prayer of Jabez is hidden in genealogy. So that's why don't skip genealogies when, when you read. And in the prayer of Jabez, we learned so many things uh, from this man who is not as famous as Moses or Abraham, but God still honored him by putting this short, short story of his life in the Holy Scriptures. And as we've seen here, the prayer of Jabez was, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Why did he ask for God's blessing? Because he was in a very bad situation. It seems that he caused the pain from the time he was conceived. Throughout the pregnancy and especially delivery, he caused a lot of pain to his mother. More than ordinary, more, way more than usual. Tremendous pain. And that's why his mother called him Jabez, which means the one who causes pain. And he asked God to help him and bless him to get out of that situation. And he also asked that God would enlarge his territory. And as we learned last time, from both the context and the results of Jabez's prayer, we can see that there was more to his request than a simple desire for a real, more real estate. What he wanted is more spiritual real estate, more spiritual territory for God. He wanted more influence, more responsibility, and more opportunities to make a mark for God of Israel. He wanted to be more like God and less like Jabez. And he prayed, oh God and King, please expand my opportunities and my impact in such a way that I touch more lives for you and your glory. Let me do more for you. So God answered his prayer. And when God gives you more opportunities and ministries and sends more people your way who need you, you will be so overwhelmed that you will need God's hand upon you because you will see this is too much for me. Unless God has his hands on me, I won't be able to sustain this ministry. And God's hand was upon him. But still, after your life transcends the ordinary and starts to encroach on a new territory for God, guess whose turf you are invading? Satan's. And since Satan's most opposed is those who are becoming the greatest threat to him and his kingdom, the more God answers your job as prayer, the more you should be prepared to confront spiritual attack. Because Satan will tempt you to sin. Because he knows that the only thing that can break this cycle of abundant living is sin. Because sin breaks the flow of God's power to you. All the incredible potential would be untapped, wasted, and waiting for the connection to be restored. So that's why devil is working overnight to tempt us to sin because then the sin disconnects us from God, separates us from God. Not from his love, but from him and his power in our lives. So if you have seen, I'm encouraging you to rush back into God's presence, to admit, confess your sins because he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But more than forgiving our sins, God wants also to enable us to experience victorious life 
to overcome sins in our life, to overcome temptations that come our way. And Jabez wanted to live free from the bondage of evil because God's trustworthy character and steadfast word had shown him something unimaginably better, way, way, way better than he lived. And as we said, Jabez means the one who causes pain. So when you read this story, I have a feeling that from the day that he was conceived till this moment when he prayed this prayer, he was causing pain. Don't you have that feeling? Otherwise, he would have not prayed this prayer, isn't it? So from the day he was conceived, his mother's tummy, he caused pain to all people around him. Starting with his mom. He may be caused physical pain, maybe financial pain as an adult, maybe he caused pain with his words. There are many different ways to cause pain, isn't it? But he definitely caused pain. And what he prayed desperately, please God help me to be like you. Help me not to be like me. Help me not to be jobless. Help me not to cause pain to people around me. And you know, Jabez of all Jabezes, by the name Satan, causes all the pain in the world today. Everything bad that is happening in this world is not act of God, it's act of Satan. He is the cause for all suffering, all pain, all disasters that we face in this world. He is Jabez of all Jabezes. And what Jabez realized, I don't want to have to do part of anything with him. I don't want to be his channel that he uses to cause pain to people around me. Is that your prayer too? Am I Jabez in a way? Are you a Jabez? Do you cause pain to people around you? Physically? Emotionally? Financially? Or verbally? If that you, then we need to join Jabez in this prayer. Please, please God, all that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Help me, not just forgive me for causing pain, but help me not to cause pain in the future. Help me to be victorious. Help me to overcome. And you know, God in his love wants to help us to overcome our temptations. Each one of us causes pain in one way or the other. Each of us here who sits right now here is a sinner, one way or the other. And when we come and confess our sins, the Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all of unrighteousness. But also, the last part, he wants to help us be victorious and break those chains of sin in our lives. He wants to help you and me to overcome temptations in our life. And in his love and his goodness, in his word, he has shown us how to overcome temptations. And today, I want to share with you this. And when we looked at Jabez, uh, the way he overcame, he said, keep me from evil. You see in the prayer, keep me from evil. He doesn't say keep me through evil. Because there is a difference. Because keep me true evil and keep me from evil. And I like what Bruce Wilkinson in his small book, The Prayer of Jabez, says in commentary. Uh, you notice this last time, but this is something that is very, very interesting. Most Christians seem to pray solely for strength to endure temptations. For victory over the attacks of our raging adversary, Satan. Somehow, we don't think to ask God simply to keep us away from temptation. 
and keep the devil at bay in our life. But in model prayer, Jesus gave his followers nearly a quarter of its 50 words. Ask for deliverance. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Matthew 6.13 We make a huge spiritual leap forward when we begin to focus less on beating temptation and more on avoiding it. Our most important strategy... Oops, sorry. Oh, I think it's this one. Our most important strategy for defeating the roaring lion is to stay out of the arena. Stay out of the arena. You know, someone says, to avoid being stung, stay away from the bees. To avoid being stung, stay away from the bees. But you see, it is not possible always and completely to avoid temptation. But sometimes we lead ourselves into temptation. It's not devil coming to us, it's us coming to the devil. So let us stay as much as we can. Let's avoid unnecessary temptation. Because temptation will come our way any way you look. You can't avoid it. But there are some that we can avoid. And you know it's important also to recognize our pattern of temptation and avoid tempting situations. For example, when I am most tempted, when? What day of the week, what time of the day, where I am most tempted? At work, at school, at home, at neighbor's house, in an airport or motel out of town? Another question we can ask ourselves, who is with me when I'm most tempted? So maybe we can start avoid those, avoiding these people. Who is with me when I'm most tempted? Friends, co-workers, a crowd, strangers, or maybe when I'm alone. How do I usually feel when I'm most tempted? Am I tired, lonely, bored, depressed, under stress, hurt, angry, worried, or maybe even successful? Sometimes when you have great successes in your life, then you start depending on yourself and you don't depend as much on God. And then you are the most vulnerable. So you see, it's very important to, to recognize your pattern of temptation because that will help you in avoiding temptation and eventually overcoming temptation. So we need to ask ourselves this question. And I believe that in your bulletin you have all received insert about overcoming temptation. So keep this one and put it in your Bible. You'll need this. This is a strategy to overcome temptation. And if anything else in our life we need to do is to overcome temptation. And we have temptation every day. So you need this. Put it in your Bible. And whenever you feel, feel tempted, just go through this and hopefully it will remind you of what we studied and meditated here this morning. But let me share eight steps in overcoming temptation. First one is, Realize your vulnerability. Please, please, realize that you are a fallen human being. Born in sin with a sinful nature that spontaneously sin. You don't have to put an effort to be selfish, to be proud. It just comes naturally, isn't it? There is much effort in trying to do what's unselfish, what is good, what is right, than in doing what's wrong. Doing wrong is so easy. Doing what's right is very, very difficult. So realize that you have a sinful nature that has a tendency to sin. And also realize that you are a no match for Satan in this condition. No way. You are a match for him. Just think about that. He tempted Adam and Eve, who did not have a sinful nature, tendency towards sin, to disobey God, to mistrust God. He caused one-third of angels 
to disobey God and turn back on God. So when he looks at you, it's a joke. <laughs> Tempting us, overcoming us, you're kidding me. <laughs> How much less effort does he need in that? So realize you're one. Don't think that you are strong, especially when you have some successes in other aspects of life. Everything is going well in your business. Everything, you're, you're a man. You're the main man or the main woman. You know what I mean? Or in sports or maybe in your family or financially you're stable. Or, you know, all these things can get into your hand. Success is a double-edged sword. Success is a double-edged sword. So be aware. Be aware of this vulnerability that you are. Be aware or you're limited. Second thing. Second thing. We have commercials in between. <laughs> we don't charge them for them. Second thing is request God's help. Knowing that you are no match for Satan and you stand no chance against him, your only hope, your only hope, the only way you can overcome temptation is to pray to God and ask him to help you. God wants to help you. He is eager to help. He can't wait to help you. But he needs your green light. If you hang and stick to the sin and cherish it and don't want to renounce it, there is nothing he can do. He respects your choice. But you know the sin will lead you into sickness and death and eventually if you don't confess eternal death. So the second step in overcoming temptation is request God's help because we desperately need his help in our spiritual battle. Desperately. Without him, there is no way we can overcome temptation. So the third step in overcoming temptation is remember, remember, every temptation is God's filter. What do I mean by that? In Corinthians, it says that God does not allow temptation to come your way greater than you can what? Bear it. Isn't that the good news? God knows your spiritual maturity. God knows your spiritual strength. God knows your connection, how strong is with him. And that's why God in his love will never allow temptation to come on you greater than you can bear it or endure it. So we have no excuse for sinning. Is that right? That's what he tells us. If we stick to him, close to him, take his hand, pray, and follow these steps, you don't have to fall. You don't have to sin. But God in his love will not allow any temptation greater than you can bear it. And I know sometimes it's overwhelming what comes our way. Sometimes we think that what I'm going through, nobody else is going through. Remember, there is always someone who's going through the worst temptation in your life. And remember this even more important. Even that temptation, if God had allowed it, what does that mean? You can overcome it. You can bear it. You can endure it. You don't have to sin. Okay? So every temptation is God. Remember that because sometimes the devil is trying to trick us and, 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 and deceive us. He say, oh, you can't handle this. This is what's coming to you. This is way beyond you. Yes, it is. But if God has allowed it, it means that together with him, I can overcome. I can overcome. Number four step in overcoming temptation is recognize your pattern of temptation and avoid tempting situation. That's exactly what Jabez prayed, as we said. Keep me from the evil one. So avoid unnecessary temptation. Try to beat temptation. One of the strategies by avoiding it. So you won't have to fight at all. But as I said, still, still, it is not possible to completely avoid temptation. But you see, it is easier to stay out of temptation than to get out of it. It's easier to stay out of temptation than to get out of it. 
then the next step in overcoming temptation is refocus your attention on something else. Refocus your attention on something else. And Rick Warren, his purpose-driven life book on page 210 and 11 says, since temptation always begins with a thought, the quickest way to neutralize its allure is to turn your attention to something else. Don't fight the thought. Just change the channel of your mind and get interested in another idea. Do whatever is necessary to turn your attention to something else. Think of something that you are planning to do, or buying, or vacation that is about, or whatever. Just change, try to change your thoughts, thinking about something else. Don't fight the thought, because then you are engraving even more. And it's harder to overcome. And the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, verse 8, Fill your mind with those things that are good and that deserve praise. Things that are true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and honorable. Refocus your attention on something else. Number six step in overcoming temptation is reveal your struggle to a godly friend or support group. You see, we need each other. This is not a lonely ranger battle. We need one another to pray for another, to support one another. But we need to share our struggles too. Sometimes we share only the blessings that we receive from the God, our victories, our successes, and that's great. We need to do that and praise God for that. But we also need to share our struggles because alone, just alone, you won't make it. You won't make it. You are not designed to make it, especially not in this sinful condition. So I need someone to pray for my spiritual struggle. Either a friend who is a spiritual or a group, small group, prayer group, whatever group, your Sabbath school class or whatever. You need support and prayer from the other people. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, it says, You are better off to have a friend than to be all alone. If you fall, your friend can help you up. But if you fall without having a friend nearby, you are really in trouble. So please, the only way that we can overcome temptations and sins in our life, one of the steps is to reveal to godly close friends that we have and ask them to pray for us too. Ask them to pray for us. Number seven. Get busy with good works. Get busy with good works. One of the ways of overcoming temptation is fill your schedule with positive things. Why? Because an idle mind is the devil's workshop. You know, someone says, the more you work, the less you sin. You see, because when you're busy, your mind is preoccupied with whatever you're doing. So the devil doesn't have that much access to you. But when you are idle, like King David was, remember? He was supposed to be with his armies, fighting, as he always did. But no, this time he took it easy. A little bit holiday. You guys fight over there. I'm going to stay home and be cool a little bit, you know, chill. And as he was chilling, you know what I mean? And he became cool. He became too cool. And the devil suggested him something. And with his eyes, he noticed something. And you know the story. The idle mind is the devil's workshop. So one of the ways of overcoming temptation is get busy. Fill your schedule with positive things. Because if you don't feel, devil will. Or someone else is going to feel. So be in charge of your schedule and fill it out from the morning till the evening. Don't be idle, because that's a perfect scenario to sin. Perfect scenario to sin. And the last thing that the Bible tells us is resist, resist the devil. In James chapter 4, verse 7, he says, Resist the devil, and he will free from you. 
In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, he says, Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Whatever devil suggests to you to do, which you know is wrong, you tell me, I don't think that God's word says the same thing. It actually says opposite to what you are saying. Remember, devil tempted Jesus with the word of God, tried to make him sin, even quoting the scriptures. So if devil is using the sword of God to tempt us to sin, how much more we should use the word of God to protect us from sinning? Because he misquotes misinterprets the Word of God. And that's why it's very important to be grounded in the Word of God, to read the Word of God every day. So when he comes with some suggestion or through someone else that we may quote the true Scripture and point out the error. So resist the devil with the Word of God. And in 1 Corinthians, as I told you, chapter 10, verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Put with the temptation will also make the way of escape, that you may be able to bear it. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, it says, For we do not have a high priest, who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. God is inviting us to come boldly into his presence, to forgive us our failures and our sins and mistakes, but in the same time, to empower us so we can find the victorious grace. So when the temptation comes tomorrow or today, I will be overcomer. I'll be victorious. And then I'll praise God for that victory too. Won't credit myself. And you see, that's exactly what Jabez did. That's exactly what Jabez did. And Jabez's story in the Bible is a proof that is not who you are, or what your parents decided for you, or what you were fated to be that counts. What counts is knowing what God wants you to be and asking for it. It's knowing what you want to be and asking for it. You see, Jabez wanted to be more like God and to do more for God. And God granted him his request. I pray that all of us here we we'll want to be more for God and to be more like God. And when we have this kind of prayers, God will answer them gladly. And as we fight our temptations that come every day and that will come even today your way, remember, remind yourself of your vulnerability. Second, request God's help. Request God's help. Recognize your pattern of temptation and avoid these tempting situations in your life. Remember that every temptation is God filtered. Avoid tempting situations. Then refocus your attention on something else. Reveal your struggles with sin with someone who is close to you, who is spiritual, so they can pray and support you. Get busy. Fill your schedule with positive things. And with God's strength and grace, resist the devil. And once you do that, you will come into God's presence more praising him for the victories in your life than asking him for forgiveness for the failures in your life. Which is the goal which is the goal. And then you will be more like God. And God will through you reach more people and new territories for him and his kingdom. Amen. Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, each one of us here is Jabez on his own. 
Every one of us here is struggling with some sins and temptations in our life. And we are so happy, Father, to be reminded that you love us, that you have compassion on us, that you understand what we are going through because Jesus Christ himself experienced that while he was this on planet Earth. But, Father, that you also are not just willing to forgive us and cleanse us from our sin, but you are willing to give us the strength and power so we can overcome those temptations and sins in our life. And, Father, as Jabez, we are also lifting our arms to you and asking that you may have mercy on us, that you may bless us, that you may enlarge our territories, that you may hand will be with us, that you may keep us from evil, that we may not sin. We all cause pain, whether financially, whether emotional, whether physical, or verbally, to others. Help us in our struggles. Help us to overcome that. Thank you for reminding us to realize our vulnerability, that we are no match for Satan, and because of that, to come to you and request for your help. Thank you for reminding us that every temptation that comes our way is filtered by you, that you will not allow to come bigger one that we can handle with you. Thank you for reminding us to recognize our pattern of temptation and avoid tempting situation. Help us to refocus our attention on something else, on different thoughts, when the sinful thoughts come our way. Help us to reveal our struggles with our close spiritual friends or group so they can pray for us and support us. Help us to get busy and fill our schedules with good things so we'll have less time to be tempted by devil. And whenever he comes, help us to resist him because you love us so much and in your power, overcome. Bless each one of us, Father, and help us to be overcomers. Because you said that those who overcome will dwell with you forever. Thank you for answering this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.